Hello everyone, I'm Travis Atkinson, the Coordinator for Public Affairs for the International Society of Schema Therapy, or ISST. Today I'll be interviewing Jeff Young, the founder and creator of Schema Therapy, and also the honorary president of ISST, along with Jeff Conway, who together with many other members of the Case Conceptualization Committee, have created a new case conceptualization form for schema therapists to use. Now I'd like to welcome Jeff and Jeff, who will be telling us much more about the new form, including key elements that differ from the prior form. Members of ISST can download the new case conceptualization form on the Schema Therapy Society website that's located at www.schematherapysociety.org to use in their practices and in their clinical settings. Jeff and Jeff, tell us some background information on the new case conceptualization form. How did it come about and how did you organize it? How did you start working on this? Well, Travis, on a practical level, it started with uh, Joan Farrell uh, coming to me and Jeff Young and asking us to revise the current uh, case conceptualization form based on an idea that uh, it needed improvements. Um, and maybe, Jeff, you could speak to the improvements that uh, were generally in mind when she was asking us to do that. Well, I think I should also say that I've been wanting to update this case conceptualization form. I was thinking of it myself for over the several years. It, it actually was originally the first and only version was in 2008, except for some very minor ones. So, you know, I, in the, first, in the original version, there's almost nothing about modes, for example, or very little about origins. So the idea was to get the form to catch up to the model, because there, since the original form, there have been many changes in the schema therapy model and the emphasis of the model. So the idea, I've, I'd always wanted to update the form so it was consistent with how, the, how schema therapy is now being done. So it's really a complete overhaul of the form. It's not just a minor update. It's a, it's a complete rethinking of it. And um, I think Joan, Joan's thinking was similar, but I think maybe without, without the whole background so much of how, what, what the purpose of that original form was and how long ago it was and what the model was like then compared to what it's like now. What are the factors that influenced you to create the new case conceptualization form compared to the prior form? Well, I, I think that the major things for me were, I think, number one, that so many things were missing. It was, it was really meant to just originally just be asking the, the therapist to write down what are, the, what are the schemas and where do they come from and what are the life problems. And there's very little else in it. It's just slight elaborations on that. But the model started folk started to have much more emphasis on modes and also on the on the integration of the or how, of origins, schemas, modes, how they relate to each other, and also just basic information like how well does a patient function, what's their diagnosis, um, what are the what's the therapy relationship like? There was there's so much more emphasis now on the limited reparenting, and so there was very little of that on the early form. So I'd say in almost every respect, this is a this has changed. All of these things are different now, and there are, it's much much more complete and much much closer to the model we practice now than back then. Yeah, just to add on that, I think the new form uh, is a real tool to provide a more clearer picture of who the patient is in, in greater depth and in greater breadth, where the previous forms uh, were a little bit too superficial and didn't really delve at a deeper level on who this person is and what their core needs are that we wanted to address and how the modes get in the way of meeting those core needs. So those things were not adequately addressed in the previous form, and we think this one really addressed a lot of those questions that really help provide a more full picture of the patient. What makes it so important for a schema therapist to have a full conceptualization in terms of providing good quality schema therapy? Well, this has been a major um, concern of mine almost since developing schema therapy. I've always felt the case conceptualization 
if it's off, the treatment won't work. That is actually central to guiding what you do. And my frustration with many schema therapists has always been that many of them place much more emphasis on the techniques or the imagery or the, you know, the different strategies or even the therapy relationship, but without a full understanding of the patient. And if, I always say, if you don't understand what happened in a patient's childhood and adolescence as they're growing up, you can't get them better. You can't do it just by knowing their schemas and their modes. You have to understand how their problems got started. And that's what a conceptualization form is. It links together the childhood, the adolescence, um, the schemas the person developed, the modes they develop as a result of the schemas to cope with them, um, the strategies they then develop. So um, this whole idea of conceptualizing with you don't do it if you don't do it, you don't know how to direct the therapy. You're just randomly trying different techniques and strategies, which is what schema therapy is not supposed to be. Yeah, and along the same lines, uh, I'll piggyback on what Jeff said, that in order to be a good parent, one must understand their child. And the core of schema therapy is good, limited reparenting, to be a good, limiting reparenting figure. And unless you fully understand who this person is that you're working with, you're not going to be a good limited reparent figure. It's just that simple. So to understand, to conceptualize a patient is a major task in terms of being a good limited reparenting figure that you know we all agree is vitally important to our work. To add to that too, um, and to broaden that question a little bit, I've done a number of interviews over the years where people ask about eclectic therapy and they ask, is schema therapy an eclectic therapy? Is it different from Lazarus's multimodal therapy? And I always say that ours is not really um, an eclectic therapy. We don't just take, the therapist doesn't just try techniques from all different models and just try them out, whichever one feels right. What makes this model different from most models that use multiple techniques is that all the techniques are guided by the case conceptualization. And that's what makes it a unified model as opposed to an eclectic model. Even though we do draw on attachment strategies, cognitive, behavioral, emotive, so we have multiple strategies, but it's the case conceptualization that makes schema therapy unique and it's what makes it different from other eclectic therapies. Will you please give us a preview of how the new version of the forum is organized? Yeah, um, it, I think, obviously I'm biased, but I think it's very thoughtfully organized. The, the first, uh, I think, half of the, of the forum really goes into how do you understand who this patient is in diagnostic terms and in more simple layman's terms, in terms of your impression as the therapist working with this person in terms of what the patient comes in with and what their vital uh, concerns are and the areas they want to address. And we also look more thoroughly at the various areas of functioning. And because, you know, as we know with so many of our patients, they may be functioning level on a career or occupational level, but interpersonally they might be really struggling. And so we really help tease out what are the areas that a person is truly functioning uh, and functioning well and really struggling in terms of their uh, ability to, to function at the level they, they would like to function at. And that, that's, well, that's uh, just if I could just add sure. one thing to Jeff, that is that one thing we do in the form, particularly in the early part that we haven't done previously, and actually we don't do much in the model per se, is trying to look at some of the positive at the positive, the strengths the patient has, because um, in trying to assess, do a general assessment of a patient, knowing you can have a patient where you've identified what their problem areas are, but if you haven't also identified where they're very functional and done well, you're that's information that you could use to actually use those strengths to help deal with the problems they're having. So we realize that identifying some of the areas in which patients are strong and function well is important in addition to identifying the problem areas that they have. 
Yeah, I think that's a real huge improvement in this conceptualization. It's really, again, about getting a fuller picture of who this patient is, is they come with a lot of strengths, but because they're often coming in suffering, so they might not see those strengths. So it's important for us to reflect back, not just the ways in which they're really suffering and hurting and want attention, but also highlighting the strengths that they have that they can bring to the table and of, of, of our, our working together. So that's that's very important. Um, the other point I want to mention in the first half of the section is we do a very detailed exploration of early history and core um, unmet needs that has been in the previous uh, conceptualization, but we go into a lot more detail uh, in this new conceptualization form. Yeah. And then if I just go on to uh, the schema and mode part, which follows, you know, just gathering a lot of information about the patient. Uh, we try to really look at, you know, how then do we understand this person get off, after all this information that we've gathered in terms of schemas and modes. And we hope and expect that the initial uh, assessment part would be very much well reflected in how we describe the schemas, how they play out how they're experienced by the patient. And the same thing goes for the modes as well, that how they, uh, the issues that they're struggling with are very much reflected in the schemas and the modes. Yeah. We're actually looking for a kind of consistency that unites the different parts of the, of the form together so that we start with the identification of the patient's problems, then go to their origins then go to the schemas that are derived from those origins and the modes that are used to cope with those schemas. So there's a kind of a, of a, of a, of a tracking across the different parts of the form so that the different components of the model are, in, are unified when someone looks at, reads the whole form. You get a picture of the patient in almost a kind of a developmental way. How did it get started? What schemas did they develop? What modes do they use to cope with it, you know? And then what are what are the, still the problems that have to be addressed? So um, I think that level of integration and consistency is something we never I never even thought of in developing the first version of the form at all. So it sounds like you're saying seasoned schema therapists will be pretty familiar with the way the new structure is organized. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. I think that it, it will, to a, to an experienced schema therapist, is gonna, I think it will feel like, yes, this is exactly the way I go about trying to think about how, how, how I go about conceptualizing and trying to think about a patient. How did, the problem, what st how did it start originally? Then what, what schemas came out of it? And then what modes? I think uh, that's how an experienced schema therapist would think, uh, I think, I hope. <laughs> Yeah, and just to go on to the next part, after we go through a full assessment in terms of schemas and modes, we've spent a lot more time on the therapeutic relationship, which we break down into two categories. One is collaboration, and one obviously is limited reparenting. And that is also an area that we've gone into a lot more detail about in terms of how a person is able to engage in therapy and how you as a schema therapist are able to engage with the patient and also so important because it's such a curative element of schema therapy is what is the quality of the limited reparenting? How, what are the obstacles? Uh, what, what is uh, the part of the schema therapist that is creating the obstacle? What is the part of the patient that seems to be creating the obstacle? And what are the, what's the dynamic between the therapist and the patient that creates obstacles? And, and obviously, in what ways are you getting through? And, and are you performing a, 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 or forming a strong bond with your patient so that mm -hmm. there's possibility for schema healing and, and mode um, uh, lessening and, you know, in terms of the, the vulnerable child and the healthy adult. Mm -hmm. so just to, yeah, and just to expand a little bit on that, we do have a, se a section on what are the therapist schemas and modes that might be playing a role in problems between the therapist and the patient. And that's another thing that was never on the original form, was trying to look at the therapist's own schemas. Since when there are difficulties in therapy, in schema therapy, very often it can be because the therapist's schemas are being activated, and then it 
it keeps the therapy relationship and the reparenting from working well. So, so it's it's very important to have a recognition of the therapy of the the issues the therapist is dealing with and how the patient triggers those issues uh, in some sessions. Yeah, it's a real call. This actually is a real call for the schema therapist to reflect on what are the dynamics within the patient, within the therapist, with the, between the dynamic that are either strengthening their ability to engage and bond with you as the as the schema therapist, and what are the obstacles that are getting in the way. So the, the, I think we've worded it in a way that really calls upon the schema therapist filling out the form to really reflect on what is actually going on in the room with this patient that seems to be a real strength and guide us towards, you know, schema healing. And what are the things that are really getting in the way that are for the schema therapist to own and also to consider within the patient, him or herself. And another thing we try to do throughout the form, not just in the therapy relationship, is ask for examples. So on multiple, on many of the questions all through, even like, for example, childhood origins, we ask for an example of a situation that would typify for example, if there was abuse, give an example to give an example of the abuse. Or if we're talking about a schema, give an example of a situation in which the schema might be triggered. Or if we're talking about a mode, or when we talk about problems in the therapy relationship, because we realize that for the person reading the form to make sense of it, an example can add a fullness to understanding conceptualization that simply reading abstract language doesn't do. So we've tr tried to concretize, get the therapist filling it out to concretize the, 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 each of the things they write so that the person who's reading the form can get a better flavor of the patient yeah. and how it plays out in everyday life. Compared to the prior version, are there additional advantages to using the new conceptualization form? Well, I'll just make a couple just sort of general comments, and I imagine, Jeff, you might also want to jump in, but just in terms of practicality, we, uh, our little committee, has worked very hard to come up with an instruction guide that goes through every single question in great detail of what specifically we're hoping to, um, the, for the schema therapist to gather for every question. So there isn't such much room for confusion. There's, it really pulls for a lot of clarity because we provide a clear instruction guide. And also, uh, Jeff and a couple of our members, uh, Suzanne Bind and Bartui Ohanian, worked very hard to put together a sample guide of, of, of a typical patient for schema therapy and how that person is conceptual, conceptualized using this form, which I think is extremely helpful. We certainly hope it will be extremely yeah. helpful. So just to uh, elaborate on that a little bit more, too, this is an actual separate it's actually a fully filled out case conceptualization form for for one of Suzanne's actual patients, but with adaptation, so that someone could see what the form would look like when it's completely filled out the right way and all the information is consistent across different sections so that people have a really concrete example of what it looks like if when the form is filled out in the way that it was intended to. So what Jeff is saying is right. It's very important, I think, the time we spent taking one case and making sure it's completely consistent across all the items on the form uh, for this one patient example that we have. What is the ideal timing for when a schema therapist starts to fill out or to complete the new form? Well, I think that our thinking was that it would be, it would probably play, it's its biggest role in the training of in the training of therapists. So, our thinking would be that as soon as someone knows the model and begins to work with the patient, and presumably they're working with a supervisor, relatively early on in the work with that patient, they would do a preliminary. They would fill out the case conceptualization form for that patient, even if they can't fill in all the sections but at least they would begin using the form quite early on in the supervision process and that they could keep enhance adding to it things that they gather more information as they work with the patient longer. There'll be parts that they can fill in that they couldn't fill in earlier. So the, it's sort of like you're constantly updating, modifying the form 
for a particular patient as the training and as the therapy goes along. Yeah, now, we really, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just to say, just um, along those lines, we really want to, uh, the members to see this as a living document that is open to change as you grow in more understanding of who this patient is. And like any close relationship, the, the work of understanding the other person is ongoing. So what you may know about a patient three months in will probably be somewhat different a year in or two years in. And so we want this, uh, the members to see this document as something that they will be reflecting on, referring back to, adding to, sometimes, you know, changing. You know, what you initially saw might not be what actually is. So we hope this would be something that would be worked on certainly in the few full, the, the first few months of working with the patient. But after it's complete, it would also be something that you would be for, referring to and adding to regularly. Now, we're also hoping that it's, I think many people in a, right now, if I had to guess, use the case conceptualization form primarily in training. And a lot of therapists, as they've been doing it more for years, for several years, they probably actually don't fill out the case conceptualization form for every patient. And we're hoping to encourage therapists who are experienced therapists to actually use the form as well. And to not, even if they don't use it with every patient, to, because I think there's a tendency for therapists to get complacent or something and believe you can do it all in your head. And that, but what you realize with this form, because it's so complete, if you actually force yourself to fill it out for a patient you're working with, you'll realize information about the patient that you don't know and that you haven't really thought through. So I think even for the experienced therapist, unlike the earlier version, this version includes so many components of the patient and the, and the therapy process and the model that I think even an experienced therapist will become more conscious of things that they haven't maybe fully integrated or thought through or missing information um, than with the previous version. So we're hoping it will get much more use not just as a training tool, but as part of the part of the process schema therapists use to work with their patients. Can you tell us more about that, Jeff? Is the new case conceptualization form appropriate for training, for instance? And if so, how? Well, I think that for it, it's clearly appropriate for training because it's really, you could say it's written in a way for, from the point of view of training because you know, it's it again, it starts, it's really starting in the sequence of the treatment itself. So it begins by saying, asking for the diagnosis, asking for your initial and general impressions of the patient. How do they come across? Um, asking what do you, what do you, what are the initial prob presenting problems the patient has? Give us a sketch of the patient. So it's, it starts right out with in the eat breakfast training from the things you might pick up in the very beginning of treatment. Then it moves on into origins, talking about childhood, and then it moves into pick the schemas, then into then into um, modes, then into the therapy relationship, then into therapy objectives, and that is what we think is the process that someone in training would go through as they're learning the model. They first have to learn how to make a general assessment of the patient as they would in any therapy. Then they have to start applying the model and start seeing what are the schemas and then what are the modes. Then they have to get more advanced and pinpointing exactly what problems are they running into. And then as they get closer to the patient, realizing what's good about the therapy relationship, what's missing in it, why are they having problems, how could they deepen it. So we think that it's really, I don't know, ideal is probably unfair, but it's as close as we can get to an ideal form for the process of training because it goes in the sequence that a therapist would go in as they're actually beginning to work with a patient and all the way through the process up, but not including the treatment. That That's a separate issue, and we actually hope to do a follow-up form that will get into treatment strategies and um, treatment techniques, but this is just the conceptualization more than the treatment. 
What about certification ratings? Will the new form be used for certification ratings as well? Well, just to highlight how important we believe in, and most especially how Joan Farrell thinks how important uh, this conceptualization form is, is it will be starting some, at some point, we think in 2018, uh, required for, it will be rated in terms of your certification. So just as your tape will be rated, how you fill out your form will also be rated because, again, if you're not understanding your patient, uh, it's questionable how well you'll be treating them as a schema therapist. Yeah. Just, just to clarify that a little bit, too, is that the idea would be for whatever, every, every uh, session that's submitted to be rated for certification, there must be an accompanying case conceptualization form using the new form and that both will be rated separately and together. In other words, the, the rater will be rating the case conceptualization and rating the session itself and rating how, how well, to what extent does the, does the uh, person, uh, is there consistency between the form and the conceptualization and what they're actually doing in the session. So the case conceptualization and the actual session itself will be both required and they actually will work together to be sure the therapist both understands the patient and conceptualizes it from, in schema terms, but also that they can actually implement it and have a good session that follows from that case conceptualization. Do you recommend that therapists refer to the form and make changes and updates throughout the treatment process? Well, absolutely. As, as I think we alluded to earlier, this is something that we would hope it would be a tool that the therapists would use throughout their work with the patient. Because again, there's no like point where you like, okay, I've got them conceptualized, put it aside and go forward. We're always in the process of conceptualizing, really trying to more deeply and more fully understand who this person is. So I think it's very important, particularly for training schema therapists, to be re referring to and re uh, reflecting on their, their conceptualization form and adding and subtracting as they get to know the patient more. I think it's really part of the essence of schema therapy is that you can't understand every part of a patient conceptually early on. And that things that you, let's say for initially, I might believe that the primary problem might be, for example, uh, abandonment issues. Then I discovered that re actually, no, I was off. What's even more central that abandonment is defectiveness. It turns out later that I decided that really defectiveness is the issue and abandonment is just a byproduct of their feelings of defectiveness. If I'm defective, people will leave me. So I think that the subtleties of a case conceptualization are changing all the time as you get deeper into working with a patient and what is the focus of the treatment changes and what even what modes and schemas the patient has is changing as you get to know the patient better. So I think yeah. it's, a, it's, an, it's a process that's constantly being revised in a therapist's mind. And if you're work, doing it in the right way, you're constantly modifying your conceptualization as you see certain things that you didn't see earlier and also certain things that you try aren't working. And you have to say, well, maybe the reason it's not working is that I conceptualized it wrong. Maybe the or maybe it's a different scheme, a different mode. Maybe the or there's a part of the origin I didn't recognize. It's actually something I never asked about. And yet that gives a whole new light on why the patient's stuck and why they're reacting the way they do to certain situations that they're in. In practical terms, what is the method for completing the new form? Uh, well, you can do it the old-fashioned way that you know people like me will probably do: print it out and write it, write it up in pen and paper. But we also designed it so that it's pretty easy and accessible to fill it out on the computer. E each question has a box that, uh, that that expands if necessary, so that any schema therapist can type it up right, right on the computer, which I think. So do you mean you'll be able to complete it on any type of device, such as a tablet or a laptop or a smartphone? <laughs> any device that can edit a Word document okay. and, and can open a Word document and edit the Word document uh, can be used for the form. Okay. The form isn't really ideal for handwriting it. Uh, 
and that's because we to make to leave enough space for every answer where you don't know whether it's going to be a short answer or a long answer it would have had to be 25 pages to leave enough space open the advantage to typing it is the t the space to answer each item can expand as long as you want or stay as short as you want so and also furthermore if it's handwritten you can't update it improve it so we strongly urge therapists to do this on a typewriter or a device that has a keyboard with and edit edit the word document and type it in as opposed to handwriting i don't think handwriting will work over a um, you know i don't i don't think it's going to be comfortable because of the space provided but also it won't be good for updating and revising it. I see. So it's designed primarily to be used with a word processor for now, but perhaps in the future there'll be new opportunities and new ways of using it on all devices. That's correct. What do you think some of the challenges will be in terms of using the new case conceptualization form? Well, as is probably obvious from this conversation, it is longer and it will take longer to fill out and to refer back to. And, you know, I, as we all know, we're all very busy people and have busy caseloads. And so it is more time intensive. Um, and I don't think and that that's hard because people are busy. And this isn't a, a bad news either, but it requires a lot more thinking about who this patient is than the previous conceptualization form. And that's not bad news, but it but it is a, a will be challenging uh, all members and certainly all training members to really think long and hard about who this patient is and what their challenges are and how is that understood in terms of schemas and modes. But the, the time part of it can't be denied. Is that something that was tested to get a sense of the average time it will take for a schema therapist to complete the new conceptualization form? I certainly had a lot of anecdotal uh, feedback from a lot of people who did say it definitely took longer I don't actually have a, a set on how many, how much longer it did take, but uh, of the people I had gotten feedback from, it is cons considerably longer than they uh, were, were required to do in the previous form. The other thing I'd say too is that um, we've been using it in. Wendy Bahari and I have a training program in New York and New Jersey, and we we have been using it as a, in a pilot form with the trainees in that, in that. And I would just say that you have to distinguish between therapists who fill it out quickly and give adequate answers versus ones who actually do it in a very complete, thorough way. So if you just did short answers that answered each of the questions, maybe you could do it in an hour or so or an hour, maybe an hour and a half. But for someone who was doing it and trying to really think through and give a, a, a lengthy enough answers to each question, I, I think it could easily take three hours to, to fill it out. So I think it depends a lot on how in-depth and how complete the therapist is in trying to fill it out. Are there any other challenges that you're anticipating in addition to the timing element? There is one other thing that came up in the feedback that we got from the pilot version that we distributed to a, to a, a group of schema therapists. And we did it's actually distributed to a fairly large group. And many, much of many of the comments they made, the changes were incorporated into the new into this most recent version to make it as you know, to address as many of those concerns as people had as possible. So it's already been tested to in that to that extent. But I guess I'd say there is the issue that comes up of, re of people feeling that we're asking the same information more than one time in the form. And I think that's a potential challenge or complaint people could have because, so for example, let's say there's a form on the origins where you write, you describe the origins, you know, what happened in childhood or adolescence that led to these problems, and, and you do a description of childhood issues. But then in the section on schemas, we might ask, how does this, how does this particular schema relate to the childhood history? Now, for some people, they might see that they saw it as redundant because they're having to refer back to something they already answered. So they have to, again, mention something they mentioned earlier. 
So we have got in the instruction guide a little note that you don't have to rewrite something. You can refer back to it and just say where it is. But I do think there are things where the person has to draw on information they already answered in order to answer a later a later question, which does can feel to some therapists as if they're having to repeat information more than once. Anything that we haven't covered that you think may be important for a schema therapist to know in terms of introducing them to the new case conceptualization form and implementing it in their practice? Well, I think we should say something probably about the committee itself to say that it wasn't just um, it wasn't just Jeff and I who developed this ourselves. We actually have a have a subgroup. It's it's both of both Jeffs. It's Paul Paris, Suzanne Vind, David Edwards, and Bartui Ohanian. So there are six of us, and we spent two years going over and over and over, adding sections, changing wording, getting feedback. So this whole committee process. So when people look at it, we don't want them to think this is something we put together in two weekends. That there's a tremendous amount of thought that went in, a thought and reworking that went into making this as good as we possibly could. And these are all very experienced schema therapists. So a lot of work's gone into it, and the committee I think deserves a lot of credit for for having a form as complete as this is. And as much as I'm sure some members will complain about how much work's involved in filling it out. If we didn't think it was worth it as schema therapists to fill out something as thoroughly as this, we wouldn't have made something as lengthy as this. So uh, it's worth emphasizing this because some people will say, well, you know, you know, I don't think they're going to say it looks like it was done quickly, obviously, but they could well say, well, you know, why does it have to be this long? And I think they have to trust us at least initially, that we wouldn't, we didn't try to make it as long as we could. We tried to put everything in there that we thought was essential in conceptualizing a case. And it's six people working together on every item over and over again. So it's very carefully thought through. There's nothing in it that we don't think is important in working with a patient to understand their issues. And, and I think it's worth mentioning again, or just acknowledging Joan Farrell, who empowered us to take on this uh, task and who provided lots of support and guidance throughout. So I definitely want to acknowledge Joan, and as well as the schema therapy community, because we did initiate a, a major pilot study of last spring of 16 and got some very important feedback. And then we also engaged uh, with some more informal pilot studies with colleagues in our various areas where we all lived and, and really took to heart the feedback we got, and, and I, I think we did our best to integrate, you know, their thoughts and questions and concerns into this form. So it was, you know, us six plus Joan plus the schema therapy community. So we're grateful yeah. to everyone. Yeah. And I guess, and I guess another point to make is that if people, if I don't know, if this is this may be an introduction, I don't know, but <clears throat> by the time you see the vid, this video you'll already have been have received in an email all three uh, all three documents. You'll have the actual form, the conceptualization form, a very long instruction guide on how to use it, and then that filled out example, full form already filled out for one case. So we hope that people, once they get it, if they go back and check your email and find it, and uh, when you do get it, to actually go through it carefully, because we're concerned that some people, you know, like, I have to be honest, I would be the kind of person who would look at the form, think I knew what it meant, and not bother reading the guide, because I'd, or looking at the example. I might think, well, I already know how to do this. And yet, if they actually read through the guide, we're much more specific on what, we, what the question is intended to be, and the sample is a very complete example of what it would, what each answer would look like. So we hope that members, at least when they're first starting to use it, will take the time to not just look through the form, but also to look through the guide and look through the instruction guide and the sample filled out form for a, for a particular for one patient. Are there plans to do any trainings in terms of helping schema therapists learn how to complete the new form? 
Sorry to get Jeff will answer that. Sorry. Well, I think there'll be more opportunities to train people, but just to put a little commercial in for something else that's coming up, there is going to be a workshop starting in 2018, training schema therapy supervisors. And that will include a section where we go through piece by piece this new uh, schema therapy conceptualization form because it's vitally important that our trainers, well, particularly our supervisors, really understand how this conceptualization you know, is and how it how it ought to be filled out to give guidance to their trainees because they might find it even with all the help that the instruction guide and the sample provide they will need some guidance from their supervisors as well so there will be training for the supervisors in the near future and i we're hoping that there'll be other venues that will provide some training as well well i and i definitely think that having certainly when we initially during this 2018 period you know, when the form is being distributed and people are starting to use it, I do definitely envision that we'll have some training sessions on how to do it. And if we can, if we can arrange it, we may even do uh, some videos that go through it section by section and explain to people who don't want to read the guide and like would prefer to actually have it, have it, have a, like a lecture or a discussion about how to fill out each section it might be a little tedious, but we go through it item by item explaining, you know, what it's supposed to be. And Jeff and Jeff, any final comments that you'd like to make? I'm extremely excited about this new form and very enthusiastic. So I would just say that I think it's a really major development in, in applying the model. It's not a change in the model, but in getting people to actually stick to the model and fully understand it and apply it to individual patients. I think this is like vitally needed because I always felt that there up until now, there is no way like to really guide the therapist to be sure when they're working with a patient, they get all the information they need in the newest version of the model um, to understand the patient. So I think this is a really major development and I really hope the therapists schema therapists are going to start using it and will really give it a chance and put a, the effort in required to do a good job of using the form because I it, it's taken us a lot of time and I think it has tremendous potential in for schema therapists in both training as well as just improving your ther- the therapy skills. I, I second that. I think this is really great news for the schema therapy community because I think this is an excellent tool for training and assessment and to guide uh, treatment. So um, I concur with Jeff. Uh, this is, this is uh, uh, something we're really happy about. And we're also trying to come up with a punishment strategy for therapists who don't use the form or don't fill it out properly. And we're trying to figure out adequate punishments to encourage people to use the form more and to do it the right way. We thought of incentives, but we realized people respond better to punishment. And we, even though it's, it's not really consistent with our model, in our schema therapy model, we thought that enforcement is so important that we are going to put the model aside and punish people anyway. Jeff Young, Jeff Conway, thank you very much for being able to share with us more information about the new case conceptualization form. As I said in the beginning, you can download it if you're a member of ISST on the website. Go to www.schematherapysociety.org. Thanks everyone for joining us. Hopefully you'll be able to use this as you continue your growth and your practice in schema therapy.